Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 27th, and it is a beautiful sunny day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. You might be able to see some of the sun coming through the window here. Uh, still a little bit cool for, you know, February is going to be a cool month, but a uh, beautiful high of close to 50 today and, and sunny, so couldn't ask for anything more. Ah, oh, life is good. So couple things I, I, I got today you'd be a bit cryptic in my in my uh, little thumbnail but uh, you'll understand by the end so I have a new pipe that I am very excited about and have already smoked several times and I'm enjoying the heck out of it look at this guy this is a J Mouton love it love it love it love it love it um, Really beautiful, light tan sandblast. Feels that the texture on this is, is just wonderful. It feels so good to hold this pipe. And look at that stem. It's a um, brindle ebonite stem, and he put a little stabilized briar accent in there. I'm having trouble pointing to it. Uh, that, that little band there is a stabilized band of briar that's actually part of the stem, and then there's another little band of the, the same brindled ebonite. Uh, I am just, look at, look at the swirls on that, just gorgeous. And, uh, you know, Jason does a wonderful, wonderful job. So, smoke's fantastic. I'm, I'm extremely happy with this. This is another twin pipe. Uh, my buddy Rick got one uh, just like it, and uh, we were chatting yesterday, uh, couch. And uh, we were chatting yesterday and, and both smoking them, and we're both just thrilled. So, Beautiful. I've never had a, a Lovat. Uh, I've always been, so I'm a stem guy. I, I like stems. It's the first thing I look at on a pipe. And to me, it always seemed unbalanced to have this long briar shank and this little tiny stem. <clears throat> but I got to tell you, what Jason did here is really interesting because he, he kind of broke the flow a little bit with that band, but it really draws your eye to the stem. And if he hadn't done that, I think this would be a rather plain looking pipe, but that just that little break really makes all the difference. Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy with it and it smokes wonderfully. Or I find it wonderful when I smoke it. Uh, tobacco. I'm going to be loading up some of this. This is Sunset Harbor Flake from Cornell and Deal. Uh, I bought this. It's kind of a funny story, uh, but let me let me get the pipe loaded and, and uh, I'll show you the tobacco and I can talk while I load it and light it. So it is, you know, a typical Cornell and Deal, very loose flake. Um, Cornell and Deal really has kind of found a very loose way to uh, use the word flake, but I get what they mean. You know, it's, it's, it's a matter of time, you know, if you press it long enough, it will ultimately uh, be one of the sort of harder, more uh, integral flakes that we see. But this is the same process, it's just not used for as long a, a t length of time. So I'm going to go ahead and what I do is I just, let me bring this over here so I don't drop it. I just, uh, when I load this kind of tobacco, I just take it, I kind of give it a twist and drop it in and I'll just keep doing that until I have enough in there. So this is an interesting tobacco. Um, it is, uh, so the components are Latakia, Perique, and Orientals, Izmir Orientals. That's it. Um, I never thought I would try this, uh, to be honest. And it's kind of a funny story. I placed the tobacco order back in mid-December and when it, by the time it came in, my wife was going through this panic because she didn't know what to buy me for Christmas and she hadn't found anything and all that. And I said, well, you know, here's a box of tobacco. I, I, I knew I had two pounds of haunted bookshop in it and I had added a couple of tins. I got some gray ghost. And I said, you know, just wrap this. And so she, she did that and I kind of forgot about it because it's not like I needed anything that was in it. And then Christmas rolled around on Christmas morning. I, she says, here's your present. And she, she did get me some other things. So I opened it up and uh, 
like, oh boy, haunted bookshop. Yeah, I knew that was in there. And then the gray ghost, I remember. And then there was this 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 tin of Sunset Harbor Flake. Was, Why did I order this? I, this isn't my kind of tobacco or anything. Why would I order this blend? A couple days later on Instagram, I saw uh, Mike from the Pipe and Tamper podcast posted a picture of an order that he got in that was like 20 or so tins of Sunset Harbor. Like he loves it. It might be the only thing he smokes. He talks about it all the time. And I realized I was listening to the Pipe and Tamper podcast. He was going on and on about Sunset Harbor Flake. And I must have just thought, ah, what the heck, I'll throw one in there to get the free shipping. So that's how I got Sunset Harbor Flake. Also, to be fair, um, I was beginning my annual Latakia wave, as, as Texas Piper Eddie calls it. And uh, that's coming to an end right now. So keep that in mind as I tell you my thoughts on this. Uh, it might just be me being moving back into my anti latakia phase. So let's get this lit up. So it, it packs well, you know, very, very easy to pack. Oh, now you can see where that sun is coming through. Uh, sorry, didn't bring a tamper over. <clears throat> so it packs very well. It, uh, you know, no problems at all with the tobacco. It, it's a bit moist, but I have no issue with it if I, if I just rub it and drop it in the bowl. You might want to dry it a bit if you're somebody that has difficulty with wetter tobaccos. And there's no harm in doing that. You know, just take some out, rub it out, leave it on the top of the tin for... Ten minutes or so. So it's an unusual blend for me. The Latakia is, is prominent. I, I can't say it's... Jeez, oh sorry about that. <laughs> By the way, it's later in the day. I usually do this much earlier. It's, it's about... Oh, it's going on 11 o'clock now, so that's part of the reason why the sun is so different. Latakia is prominent. The Orientals are evident. You know, there's a bit of a sour twist of Latakia, and I can pull that out. Although they're not super obvious, you know, if you, if you didn't know they were there, you might not be able to find them. And I cannot get any Perique. If you retrohale, there's a little bit of that sort of wasabi effect. Uh, you know, in your nasal passages, maybe that's the Perique. I don't know. But it's there's no flavor of Perique in this that I can pull out. What I can say about it is it is smooth. It's very smooth. It's reminiscent of some of the older... Um, I hate to say this because everybody's going to run and buy it. Uh, it reminds me a bit of something like Penzance or uh, even uh, Squadron Leader. Not as not as much Latakia as Squadron Leader has, but but in terms of that smooth, well-rounded uh, flavor that it's got, uh, it, it's reminiscent of those blends. It's not a replacement for them. It's not uh, well in my memory. It's been a long time. But yeah, it's uh, the problem I have with it, you know, just to be completely honest about my opinion here, uh, you know, I'm just giving you my impressions. I'm not telling you what's right or wrong. Uh, it's very nice. <laughs> and that's about all I can say. You know, it's not, 
losing my temper. There's nothing offensive about it. There's nothing that, you know, even at my, at the height of my Latakia distaste, I would probably say, this is okay. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it's very non-offensive. It's very, um, I shouldn't say non-offensive. There's not that many offensive tobaccos, but what I mean is it's, it's not in any way upsetting my palate. It's not, it's not, some, I'm not thinking, oh God, I'm not going to smoke this again. But I'm all not, also not thinking, gee, I can't wait to smoke this again. You know, it's just kind of there. It's not complex. It's the kind of thing I want to smoke, or I would smoke, while I'm working, while I'm, you know, doing something, um, maybe reading. Uh, but I, if I'm just relaxing, I, I want something a bit more complex than this. Yeah, so Sunset Harbor Flake. Glad I tried it. Probably won't be buying any more of it. So, Mike, if you're watching, it's all yours, buddy. So why the splash? The, the video was titled Sunset Harbor Splash. I had something happen last week, this past week, uh, that, that I thought I'd share with you. So I was, uh, so first off, I, I, I have these t-shirts with pockets in it, and I've always gotten t-shirts with pockets in them. And I learned the hard way that what I've done for years is I keep my Zippo in that pocket. Very convenient. I also will keep my reading glasses in that pocket. And occasionally if I'm, you know, jumping up to go do something and I want to take my cell phone with me, I'll stick that in that pocket. Um, and it's fine. You know, it, it, it works out okay. I don't do it with the Zippo anymore because I actually got a really bad rash on my chest from what I assume was the Zippo fluid. I can't say that, I can't prove that, but the fact is when I stopped putting the Zippo in my pocket, the rash went on, and I don't want it to come back, so. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it was lunchtime, I was working, and I said, okay, I'm gonna go make some lunch, and I, I stick the cell phone in my pocket, and, and by the way, a lot of my shirts don't fit very well anymore because of the weight that I've lost, they're very loose, and I should throw them away, but, they're comfortable and you know if I'm just around the house and not, nobody's gonna see me I don't mind if it's a little baggy it just you know so my wife yells at me for wearing them but I wear them so anyway I'm wearing this loose fitting shirt I've got the cell phone in my pocket I'm gonna get some lunch and the dogs want to be fit so I go off and get two scoops of dog food we've got these cups that you can scoop out of the, the bin that we keep it in and I go to the dog food uh, bowls, which are on the floor. Uh, there's two of them, because we have two dogs. And in the middle of them, between the two bowls, there is a uh, dog water bowl that's got this like, it looks like a water cooler. It's got this little jug on top of it uh, that's like a mini water cooler jug. And as they drink the water, more water flows down. So it's great. We, we're sure that they always have water, and we just have to check to make sure the level of that isn't, isn't too, uh, too low and that's important because two dogs are fairly large dogs they're 60 to 80 pounds now uh i should know better but i know they're somewhere in that range i think isabel's close to 80 and thatcher's probably close to 70. so they're big dogs and they drink a lot of water and they can get dehydrated pretty quickly so it's important to have that anyway so i get the two cups of, of water and I bend over, uh, two cups of food rather, and I bend over to pour the two cups of food into the bowls, and I hear a splash. Now this is kind of funny because I've got dogs sitting on either side of me because I make them sit before I put the food in the bowl. And I hear the splash and I see the dogs take off in opposite directions <laughs> because there was a sound that there wasn't supposed to be. You know, you know how dogs can be sometimes. They were terrified. And I look down and they're sitting in the dog's water bowl is my cell phone. 
I finished pouring, dropped the cups, pulled it out as quickly as I could, got it over to the to the sink and paper towels and all that kind of stuff, took the case off. It seemed to be relatively okay. I didn't think there had gotten any water in it, but uh, and, and it was working fine. So I didn't worry about it until I tried to charge it later that day, and it would not charge. And I figured, okay, probably some water got into the charging port. So I again dried it as best I could, you know, banged it a bit on a paper towel and stuff. And then I put it in a Ziploc bag with some desiccant. Um, rice works, but I actually have some, some real desiccant from some other things I was doing. I don't have to explain it, but... And I, I zipped it, I wrapped it in a paper towel so it didn't get any of the desiccant dust in it. Put it in the Ziploc bag, sealed it, and left it for about six hours. And uh, it worked fine after that. But those six hours were tough, and I'm kind of surprised at how difficult I found it to not have a cell phone. And it bothers me that I found it this difficult. You know, because that's my link to Instagram, and a lot of people get in touch with me through Instagram. And for six hours, I was, you know, missing from that. Um, I, it's how I see YouTube comments, and, you know, not that those are critical, but, you know, to go six hours without at least looking once is unusual for me. It's how I will check email. Just convenient. I can do that on a laptop, of course, but... Uh, yeah, it just, I felt disconnected. And I don't like that. I don't like that I'm dependent on a, on a piece of technology to feel connected to the world. So that bothered me. But all that aside, plugged it in after six hours and it worked fine. So problem solved. So don't keep your cell phone in your shirt pocket if your shirt is really loose and you're going to be feeding dogs. That's the moral of the story. I do like this pipe. It, it's actually clenchable. I feel very comfortable clenching it. So I didn't think at first, you know. But it's deceptive. I mean, I, I, I haven't measured it, but I'm guessing, and I don't know much about Lavats or Canadians or lumbermen. Uh, I, I just know that I've never felt attracted to them. But I'm guessing that if you measure this out, this is probably the same dimensions as a billiard. It's just a matter of the shank moving. So it shouldn't be surprising that you can clench it if, you, if you're somebody that clenches billiards, which I am. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just always thought it would be heavy. It's very light. Very, very light. So this is my fourth J. Mouton pipe. I never thought I'd have that many from one maker, to be honest. Um, I'm glad I do. But there's a couple of other carvers that I, I would really like to get, uh, that I've been following for years, like Jason. Um, and I'd like to get a couple of their pipes. So this is probably going to be my, I hate to say this, Jason, but my last J. Mouton for a bit. I will, I will probably get another one, but... Probably not in the next year. We're really lucky to have uh, so many good pipe carvers uh, in in our community. You know, folks that we we can watch work. You know, we've seen them develop over years, and 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 we know that they're friends, and you know, we can interact with them and say, "Hey, I'd like this kind of a pipe," and they, I, you know, in this case. I let Couch and Jason figure out what this pipe was going to look like. And I thought, well, I know Couch. I, I trust him. I trust his judgment. And I know Jason, and he's not going to let Couch order a bad pipe. And, you know, it worked out just fine. But it's really, uh, it's really special that you can have that kind of a relationship with, a, with somebody that makes something this important to you. 
And, you know, we got Jason, we got Phil Rivara, um, got a couple of Phil's pipes. I've never commissioned a pipe from Phil, and I'd like to do that. I just, I, I don't want to start naming people because I'll, I'll forget someone, but there's, there's Eric Weaver, there's Simon London Calling. Uh, he's really been making some beautiful pipes as well. And Eric makes beautiful pipes. So yeah, I've got, I've got a few carvers in mind that I've been following for some time and I'd really like to, you know, add those to my gathering. But you can't go wrong with the Jay Mouton pipe. I'd like to say that you can't go wrong with Cornell and Deal Blend. Again, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just not my thing. Pretty picture, though. I just noticed there's a pelican. Anyway, I think I've entertained myself <laughs> enough for one day. I hope that you found this entertaining. Don't have much planned for today. Uh, just going to take it take it easy, I think. Back to work tomorrow. And it's my last week of working from home. So next week I'm, I'm in the office. And I'm, I'm excited about that. So I'll keep you updated. We'll see how things go. Uh, try to do something uh, on Wednesday that's been hit or miss. And, you know, it will be hit or miss. That's just going to be life. But when I get back to work, there might be true roadway rambles coming in the future. And of course, we'll be back on Friday with uh, another Cane Rod Pipes Virtual Pipe Club. And I look forward to, to that. So with that, friends, I'm going to uh, wish you all the best for this Sunday. I hope it's a, a wonderful Sunday and you have a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.